Chu King wakes up after being drugged in a bedroom with a woman on top of him. He jumps out of the bed quickly trying to assess his situation. It dawns on him that he has finally returned to his home world. 300 years ago, he accidentally entered the fairy world at Qingcheng Mountain after which he began his cultivation journey. In those 300 years, he worked tirelessly to gain knowledge and train day and night to become the best swordsman cultivator. He tried to reach the realm of eternity but instead opened the hall of time and space which sent him back to earth when he was 17. He looks at the woman sitting on the bed, eyeing her up and down. He tries to leave but the woman named Yi Chengxi stops him saying that he can't escape from her. She grabs his hand but he manages to push her back, making a run for it while snatching his clothes. Chu steps outside and gets teary from seeing the 21st century world again. He is excited to meet his family again. His happy thoughts get interrupted when he sees a man clinging to a woman, making him feel sick. He gets pushed aside by a strong woman carrying cement. Wherever he looked he sees people acting differently from where he used to live. Chu runs to the library to see world history where he finds out that a cataclysm in ancient times altered women's physiology making them smarter and stronger, swapping the gender roles and now here in the 21st century, men are considered inferior to women. Chu goes to his home to see his family. He sees his dad cleaning the house and quickly runs to embrace him. His father smells the scent of perfume on him and scolds Chu for being with a woman. He shoves a newspaper in his face showing him a headline about a boy who was recently raped. He tells him to stay away from bad girls since Chu is his and his mother's only hope because her sister is useless. Chu asks about his mother and his father tells him that she is outside discussing business. He explains to Chu that the family business isn't going well. Chu tells his father not to worry about him too much as everything will be fine. He tells his father that he's going to go and call his sister, Zio, down for dinner. He opens her bedroom door and sees that Zio is busy watching porn. He closes the door quietly and screams his throat dry. After a few minutes, Zio steps out with a satisfying aura about her. Chu asks if she has been watching porn but she blows him off saying that she was watching a live stream that is not for little boys like him. Zio goes downstairs and asks her father for money letting him know that she will eat out with friends and will be back late. Zio tells him that she needs to socialize and do business with them. Her father is skeptical but still gives her the money. He tells Chu that he has to do these things since his sister will have to provide for her family one day. Since Chu is a handsome boy, he can just marry someone wealthier than him and his life will be set. Chu's mother, Chu Tinan walks in tired from a busy day's work. Chu excitedly hugs her as it's been so long since he last saw her. Tinan is confused and gives him money thinking that's what he wants. Chu is horrified since his mother used to be stingy that he sometimes had to deceive her just to get Ten Yuan to play games in a cafe. He hands the money back but his mother tells him to keep it since his academic performance has made her proud. She asks where Zio is to which Chu's father angrily tells her that Zio is still fooling around. Tinan tells him not to worry as he raised her and that she'll eventually start taking responsibility. His father hugs her and tells her that he has prepared food for her. Chu is disgusted seeing his parents like this. Even though the world is upside down he still can't stomach them acting like lovers in front of him. Dread creeps over him as he thinks that he'll eventually end up like this too. He decides to head back to his room and is surprised to see that his room is all feminine looking. He opens his drawer and hundreds of love letters fall from it. Chu didn't know that he is the sweetheart of his middle school. Later that night, Chu sits on his bed and tries to use his powers again. He notices that Sayo still isn't back home but then realizes that it's normal here. Right at that moment, he gets a call from her. He picks it up and he hears his sister's scared voice telling him that she is in trouble. Zio tells him not to call the police or tell their parents. Chu asks in a worried tone about what happened. Zio tells him to grab a black bag that's under her bed and bring it to her quickly at a bar on High Street. Someone snatches Zio's phone and speaks to Chu. It's a woman. She tells him to bring the bag to room 302 quickly. Chu hurriedly grabs the bag and jumps out the window to get there as fast as possible. He enters the room and sees a lot of gangsters there, all of them women. Zio is also there, being held hostage. Chu throws the bag in front of a woman who seems to be the boss and tells her to let his sister go now. The woman gets up and opens the bag which is full of money. Zio is terrified to see the money. She tells Chu that her friend Lin told her to keep the bag and she didn't know that there was money in it. The woman tells Zio that Lin stole it. She tells her to get lost before she changes her mind. 
Sayo quickly grabs Chu's hand and tries to leave but the woman tells her to leave Chu behind. Sayo knew that it wouldn't be that easy. She gets in front of Chu to defend him. Sayo tells the woman to leave him out of their business. The woman tells Sayo that she will have to stay then and work extra hard. Sayo tells Chu to leave but he pushes her aside saying that he has morals. He walks up straight to the woman who gets annoyed by his attitude. She tells him that she is going to torture him but he slaps her in the face before she can finish. The woman throws a punch at him but he blocks it with his own punch, surprised that the women of this world have much more strength. The other thugs attack Chu but he easily defeats them. He tries to leave with Zayo but the woman pulls out a gun, threatening to kill him. Zayo steps in front of Chu to save him. A woman in a red dress walks in, impressed by what she just witnessed. It's the same woman who had drugged Chu earlier this morning, Yi Chengxi. Chengxi tells the woman that she will take care of him and she can go away now, making her mad since Chengxi is breaking the rules. Chengxi tells her guards to cut off one of each of her limbs and throw her in the street. She turns to Chu and tells him that it's a present from her. She tells him that he's the first man who talked to her in this way, and she has decided to make him her 36th boyfriend. He can be her prostitute with that weak body of his. Chu pushes her away saying that he can handle himself challenging her to an arm wrestle. Zayo pulls Chu aside asking if he has gone mad since Chengxi is seriously powerful. Chu ignores Zayo and makes a wager with Chengxi that if he wins, she will not bother him again, and if he loses, he will become her boyfriend. Everyone in the room thinks that Chu is just full of himself. They start the match and Chu realizes that Chengxi is actually very strong, but he isn't an ordinary man. Chu uses his cultivation powers and wins the match, leaving Chengxi in disbelief. Chu gets up to leave. A guard tells Chengxi that she'll go and chase him but she slaps her telling her that she has not lost yet. Chengxi tells Chu that he is already destined to be taken by a woman. If he says yes, she'll take him as her husband and no one will be able to touch him. Chu tells her that they have hands and feet and can make their own paths. He tells her that men are trying to better themselves and that's what matters. Chu leaves with Zayo. Chengxi tells her guard that she isn't going to let him go. On their way back, Zayo pokes Chu's brain. Zayo asks how he got so strong and tells him that he should have taken Chengxi's proposal, annoying him. The next day, Chu goes to attend his school. On his way there, he gets called out by Ling Dong, his best friend who is running toward him like a girl. Chu is both shocked and confused to see Ling Dong act like a 17-year-old girl. Ling grabs Chu's hands and asks why he wasn't returning his calls yesterday since he heard that Chu was in trouble yesterday. Chu snatches his hands away quickly and moves back, creeped out by the level of femininity dripping from Ling. He tells Ling that it was nothing and quickly runs away. Chu is completely depressed seeing his classmates act so differently. He doesn't have any energy left to live in this world anymore. The class president, Songcha Oren pokes him, asking if he's alright. Chu lies that he just didn't have any breakfast and was feeling hungry. Oren is about to ask him to have food with her but gets pushed out of the way by another large muscular girl. She asks if Chu got her letter yesterday but he just punches her. The girl gets mad at Chu and tries to hit him but Yi Mao, Chengxi's brother stops her. Mao takes Chu outside to have a private word. He tells Chu that he's sorry since yesterday he got busy and asked his sister to drop him home. If he had any idea that Chengxi was going to drug him, he would have never let him go with her. Chu tells him that it's alright since nothing happened and goes back to attend his class. After school, Chu is on his way home when a car stops next to him with Chengxi. She tells him to get inside for the sake of his family. Chu gets in the car. He tells Chengxi that she made a big mistake threatening his family. Chengxi asks what if she wasn't making a threat. Chu breaks the ornament in her car and gets in close telling her that she must know the consequences for threatening him. Chengxi is a little surprised by his actions but tells him that it isn't a threat and she can help his family business out. In return, she is going to chase him openly. They'll start as friends at first and she'll help him. Chu sits back in his seat and agrees. He asks what her real intention is and to make it fast. Chengxi asks if he learned old martial arts. He tells her that he didn't since men in this world are unable to cultivate. Chengxi tells him that she did a background check on his family and he may be telling the truth, but his strength says otherwise. Chengxi tells him that she thinks that it's a little secret of his. Before he can respond, their car gets rammed by a truck. Chu gets a hold of his bearings. He looks over at Chengxi who is completely disoriented. He quickly grabs her and jumps out of the totaled car. Chengxi notices that Chu has a metal rod stuck in his back. She tells him to go to the hospital but he tells her that it isn't over yet. Armed women jump down from the truck. The women charge at Chengxi with their weapons raised. One of them attacks Chu, underestimating him. Chu knocks her out with a single punch. He grabs her sword and looks at Chengxi who is fighting alone. Chu quickly charges in to help her. 
they both managed to take everyone out. Chengxi thanks Chu because if it weren't for him, she would have been in a difficult situation. She asks if he's hungry. Chu tells her that they'll schedule it for another day since it's late, and his dad will be worried at home. Chengxi gets a call and sounds worried. Chu starts to leave since it has nothing to do with him. Before he can get away, Chengxi grabs his hand, crying. She tells Chu that her mother was also just attacked right now and is seriously injured. Chu tells her that this cannot be a coincidence. Chengxi tells him that if her mother dies, her aunt will take over the family and she will be kicked out. Chu tells her not to worry and stay strong. He tells her that he will go with her to check on his mother. For some reason, Chengxi feels like she can trust him. They go to the Yi residence. One of Chengxi's guards runs over to her, explaining the situation. She tells Chengxi that her aunt isn't allowing anyone besides Chengxi to go in and meet her. Chengxi tells Chu to come with her but the guards at the door stop them saying that he can't go in. Luckily Chu had studied some medicine in the fairy world. He tells the guards that he is a doctor here to see Miss Yi. The guards scoff since a man can't be a doctor but step aside when he tells them the symptoms they had been suffering from for years. Before they can get in, Chengxi's aunt, Yi Mei, and her daughter, Meyer, step in their way. Mei tells Chu that she doesn't believe that he's an actual doctor and he's just trying to get in the house. If he really wants to enter, he will have to prove himself to her. Mei tells Meyer to check if he's skilled or not. Meyer tells Chu to promise to make love to her for a night if she wins. Chengxi gets mad at her but Chu stops her telling her to calm down. Meyer, seeing that they are distracted, attacks Chu but he is able to block it in time. Chu punches Meyer in the stomach, rendering her unable to fight. Mei runs to her daughter's side, cursing Chu who tells her to take her to a hospital since she might have internal injuries. Both Chu and Chengxi go inside the mansion where they meet another aunt of Chengxi who tells them about Chengxi's mother's condition. The three of them go in to meet Yi Qingmei, Chengxi's mother who is bedridden. Curious about who he is, she inquires about Chu. He tells her that he is a doctor and asks her to show him her wounds. Qingmei tells Chu that it's okay since he can't help him and asks to be left alone with her daughter. Chengxi tells Qingmei that it's alright as she can trust him since he helped her out as well. Qingmei can't believe that Chengxi is complimenting a man. Chu tells Qingmei that he is injured on the left side of her back and the bad energy is spreading through her. King Mei tells everyone that she needs to talk to Chu alone. King Mei asks if the Lai family sent him and what his intentions are. Chu explains that he's not from the Lai family and that he saved her daughter's life. King Mei believes him and shows him her wound. Chu quickly realizes that her wound has been cursed. He uses his powers to absorb some of it. He tells King Mei that he can't take it all out in one go but she is happy to be relieved this much, thanking him. When Chu is about to leave, Chengxi stops him, asking him to stay the night since she has a reward for him. Chu pushes Chengxi back saying that if his parents found out that he spent a night with a girl they'll freak out. They say their goodbyes as he gets in a taxi. On his way home, Chu looks at the curse that he just absorbed. In the fairy world, there was an elixir for these types of curses. Chu wonders if there exists any in this world. The next day at school, Chu notices the boys cheering for a girl playing basketball, Tang Zian. Chu looks over and realizes that she was his first love in his original world but this world is different so she probably doesn't know him. He is about to leave but Zian calls him out. She asks if she knows him from somewhere. Chu tells her that they go to the same school so she might have seen him. Zian challenges Chu to a basketball match saying that if she wins, he'll become her boyfriend and if she loses, she'll do anything he says. He agrees to it. Everyone gathers to see their match. The game starts and Zian easily gets past him, dunking the ball. Chu is amazed by her skill. She tells him that she won't be going easy since she wants to win him over. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be the first to know when a new recap drops.
Thank you.